And and folks, feel free to jump in. I think um, given that we do have a smallish audience to start with, I think we can also sort of customize it to what you want to get out of it. I, I just wanted to start off this whole thing by saying I was not a product manager from scratch because I know that's one of the things that I hear from a lot of people um, who are trying to either um, switch into this, um, you know, functional role or, um, you know, who are trying to either um, move into um, a different company in this role. Um, so my career trajectory did not start off as a product manager. In fact, um, when I started um, in the industry about you know, 12 years ago, I don't really think that this um, role even was um, um, really, uh, you know, identified as, as one of those fields. It, it just had different titles. So um, my career trajectory really started off as, um, you know, back in India, having to an engineering school. Um, I worked in a startup back in, um, you know, my first job was in a startup um, right out of college. I consulted for a bit here. <clears throat> and then my first real big job was actually at Boeing after my consulting gig. Um, and then I finally moved into Boeing, uh, into Microsoft. Um, so very, very quick. I mean, we talk a lot about like product roadmaps, uh, but I think um, it'll be very um, interesting. I mean, one of the, the exercises that I sort of did um, to kind of find out what I'm really interested in um, was to do some sort of a career roadmap, right? Because um, we've really worked on, and I'm sure like, you know, each of you, um, if you kind of look back at, you know, where, whichever stage you are at, maybe you're, you know, right out of grad school or, you know, you are uh, um, in the industry and having different functional roles, um, just, just try to maybe like do something that um, also lets you dig into your um, like career roadmap. And if you can see, um, I've, I've taken off the years, I don't really want to date myself, but, uh, uh, you know, like I said, I've been in the industry for like 12 years and then um, it really didn't have a product um, role back then. I mean, it was a lot of different titles, like either functional analyst or it was a, um, you know, a service engineer or a analyst title. Uh, but one of the things that I did um, as I was preparing for this whole uh, interview sessions um, was to look back, to kind of look back and dig into um, areas where uh, I might have actually done a lot of product management, just that it wasn't called product management. Um, so that's that's something that um, took some time um, because it, it meant going back a couple of years and, and you know, really evaluating what I really did. So. <clears throat> One thing I would um, say was a lesson learned for myself um, was not to um, just rule out certain um, job titles because either they don't have a product manager title, it could be a product manager, it could be a program manager. Um, so one thing is not to maybe get too hung up on just the job title because, I mean, it's just a title, but it, it really is what you make out of it. Um, as you'd see that um, there's a whole different bunch of names and flavors to PM. Um, Microsoft, um, and I can I can dig a little bit deeper into that. Uh, but depending on the company and the industry, um, there really is um, very different, um, um, you know, things that really make the whole product space. And and even within Microsoft um, and within Boeing, um, I can use my examples here. Um, no two PMs really have the same set of um, um, functional roles or same set of job um, duties. Um, so the good thing or the wonderful thing I feel like with product manager or PM title is um, it really um, is sort of something that can morph into what your strengths are and where you want to steer. Um, so I think the last five or six years is where I actually held a product manager title and it started off really in Boeing and, and one of the things that helped me in my career was um, being one of the early adopters in Boeing, um, like you probably already know, Boeing is is, is it's not a software driven driven industry per se. Uh, but that's not to say we don't build products, right? Um, so there was a lot of product management, uh, but just that it was called in like a whole bunch of different titles. Um, so um, maybe if there's one takeaway from this session, it probably could be, um, you know, don't rule out anything that doesn't have the product title. Uh, maybe dig into what you actually did um, in that in that particular position, and, and you'll be surprised. Um, there might be a lot of PM um, um, duties that you might have done. Um, so, like I mentioned, you know, you kind of define your roadmap um, and you own it. Um, and a lot of times there were certain stretch assignments um, which were not really glamorous, which were really actually the ones that nobody wanted to take. Um, so if you are able to take some of them in either your, you know, internship or 
Um, I'm not sure what the demography here is, but if a lot of you are like either early career or mid career or kind of like switch between industries, um, you know, take on certain um, stretch assignments or, you know, certain internships. Some of them could be like unpaid. One of my most um, um, interview, um, one of the examples that I use a lot in my interview was one of the research projects that I did at UW and for which I actually did not get paid. Um, but, you know, a job doesn't necessarily mean something that you're getting paid for. So, you know, at interviews, maybe um, have certain side um, gigs or like, you know, volunteering that you might have done. Um, and they are very good examples as well. So, you know, take on those stretch assignments and, you know, test the waters to see if you really like this. Um, and number three is, is one of the hardest part of um, being a PM or a product manager. Um, there really is no one size fits all. Um, and that's what I think makes this job interesting and also slightly frustrating um, is um, be it at an interview or <clears throat> once you actually are evaluating an offer or a set of offers, um, there's really not one right way or like, you know, set of like parameters that you can use um, to assess a product manager skill set or, you know, what you're really going to be doing. Um, a lot of it is really on the job. So maybe, you know, some of the, the design centric thinking of like, you know, um, own, own the customer's problem, like, you know, empathize, um, you know, work, work on some of your user um, experience skills. Um, those are all like a very good way to, you know, transition into, you know, product management. And, and number five is something I'm still working on. I mean, I, I should preach what I say, but I think um, definitely make some time um, to read, read and read some more because there really isn't something that you can, um, you know, just um, pick up on the job. And if you don't have those experiences, um, there are a ton of resources. Um, I'll, I'll share a few of those towards the end of this um, um, presentation. Um, but we have a lot of free resources on the internet, so um, just, you know, dig in. Any any questions so far? I mean, I know we just sort of touched the tip. Okay, so moving on. Um, and yeah, this is me many times. I'm, I'm puzzled. Like, there are times through my product management career where you really don't know, you feel like a ping pong ball. Um, and actually that's precisely what um, like product or program managers do. I know I'm bundling these two phrases into one and that's because Microsoft doesn't have a product um, title per se. A lot of the pro program managers do both, you know, this side of things, basically the business and consumer side of things along with product marketing managers. And they're also very deeply immersed with the development team. It might be slightly different than Amazon, and I've heard that from some of my um, friends and you know um, people that work in Amazon, and they can validate that. Uh, but I can tell you from my experience so far in um, um, my Microsoft and also Boeing, um, a really a good a good product or a program manager is one that is able to kind of seamlessly go through this breadth um, and able to relate with these different aspects of you know like the business and consumers. Um, maybe understand what the application architecture sort of looks like, um, you know, co uh, you know, empathize with the developer and really understand what is it that they need from you. And then also, you know, um, interact with the different um, development team. And, and this might seem like a bit much um, and, and you don't really have to go too deep depending on, you know, what your domain is. Uh, but the ability to sort of switch gears and perspective is, is what helps, um, I think, being a good, to be a good PM. And, and this is something that um, interviewers test. And there's no easy way to test and there's no easy way to answer. But um, one of the things that really helps is, you know, practicing, right? Um, so what I wanted to share next um, was one of the framework that um, I guess worked for me. Um, there, there are a ton of frameworks, right? So typically in a product management interview, um, you, you presented certain hypothetical questions or, you know, there are certain questions where they'll ask you like, you know, give me an example of a time where, um, you know, you had like conflicting priorities and, you know, how did you, so those are all situational questions, right? So a lot of those situational questions um, will, will sort of rely on you to um, have like, you know, maybe like 10 or 15 solid examples from your past experiences. Um, and if you don't have enough examples, um, you know, you could even approach some of those questions like say, if I were in that situation, I would do this and this. So 
um, it's it's great if you have you know those real world examples that you've actually worked on, but it's not possible, right? There are certain scenarios where you may not have encountered, and and I think um, the approach really should be to maybe pause and then you know be candid that I'm I have not like maybe experience this, but if I were, you know, to experience this, um, this is what I would do. Um, and this is what I would go about. And and to kind of um, systematically and logically answer the question, uh, because most of these questions are going to be like one-liners. Um, and, and so it's kind of for you to flesh like a whole business case and solutionize, you know, uh, from like the one or two lines that the interviewers give you. So it's they're not going to give you too much cues, but it's, it's that's how you know most product um real world happens right you don't get too much context you know that you know there's this big problem that's happening and then how do you go about it? so a lot of times a good interviewer or a good interview is just trying to like um gauge how how your thinking process is how you're going to you know go through ambiguity and and go about that um so it seems a bit much right because it is and and i think that's where having some sort of a framework or a ready right now for you to rely on is very helpful and if you if you search in the internet you're going to find a lot of them like you know from um, i think there's this book called very famous book called like decode and conquer you might have um, seen a lot of posts by lewis Lynn, and and he has a very good good framework um one thing that i would caution is not to just take like a cookie cutter framework and then just you know use it because as you might imagine interviewers talk to like a ton of candidates um, so this is probably an opportunity for you to like, you know, maybe customize it um, and make it your own, right? Um, so one of one such framework that really helped me is, um, you know, the Lean Canvas. And I'll show you what that canvas looks like. Again, it's, it's out in the open. This is not something that I created. But having used this a lot in my, in my like real work, it kind of came like second nature for me. And it just felt right that I should use that. But Here's um, sort of one of the things that I would um, not advise, but you know, encourage each of you to do is is find a couple of these frameworks. Maybe have a modified framework that works for you, and and sort of put in your own um, you know additions to it, so that way it, you know it's it kind of truly speaks to you, right? Um, so essentially, any sort of a product exercise or a product design question is is wanting to test how you're going about identifying the problems, um, how you're going about identifying for whom you're solving those problems and, you know, why are you solving those problems for them? Um, you know, and then like the most critical part of any PM and the pain point for most PMs, I think would be prioritization, right? And and how you sort of go about prioritization and, and I guess subsequently, like how do you articulate your decisions? Because um, you, you can take a stance and, and if, as long as you have a legitimate argument as to why you're taking certain prioritization stance, uh, you know, it could be based on monetization, it could be based on, you know, timeline, it could be based on, you know, available infrastructure or, you know, technical availability. So whatever it is, you know, just um, share that out, right? Like, you know, talk, talk it out loud. And, and this is something I would sort of say is similar to, you know, solving some problem, right? You don't go into an exam and say, okay, I, I know how to do this and then I'm going to take all my time because you have like, you know, it's time box. You have 45 minutes or like an hour. Um, so the 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 more um, quicker you get at going through this exercise, you know, the more you're going to cover ground during an interview. So if you're going to take a lot of time at the identifying and prioritization phase, you probably will never get to the design phase. And, and guess what? The interview is not going to nudge you. They're going to sort of wait and see how much you cover. Um, so here's where I would like, like say, like practice, 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 right? Um, this is not something like you wouldn't go into an exam, um, like, you know, you know, just you know, skipping through your, like, say, a math exam. And, and you're going to practice, right? And you're going to do it multiple times. So um, the same way, pick, pick a framework, pick a set of frameworks, pick a set of questions that work for you um, or you want to, you know, um, practice with certain buddies, um, you know, mentors or, um, you know, your roomies or, you know, your significant other, find people that you can talk to. Or if you don't have anybody, you know, actually just, you know, open a Zoom or something, um, record yourself and then like look back and say, where can you do better, right? Are you are you pausing too much? Are you, um, you know, sounding confident? Um, so practice. <clears throat> so again, um, you know, in, in a product interview or a 
program manager interview they they really want to hear the story right what are you solving for how are you solving for and and really um a lot of times what i mean i've been guilty of this as well i i would just jump in and start like answering um please don't do that i mean i think um that you kind of lose your chance to ask the interviewer additional questions um so if you have um you know like notch them like ask them why what you know how and 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 this is a good time like beginning of the interview is a good time to ask those clarifying questions um and and this is the framework that i actually use because um we've had a ton of like i said this is very actively used um in my previous um employer um we use this it's called a lean product canvas and during my microsoft as well as um amazon interviews um i sort of um you know talk through a certain um a design question or a certain hypothetical question and then sort of use this framework to um ensure that i'm covering each of these phases right so for instance like what what really is the you know the business problem that you're going to solve um and if that could be a problem like who are the users that you want to solve for and then like are you making any assumptions and and you see right it's just it's just a very concise way to go about and and you know there is something called the circles method that i think um is outlined in the decode and confer so pick like couple of them and then um practice um so maybe i don't know if we have the time but one of the things because i was in the api management space before i moved to microsoft teams um one of the things that um we had done is like you know um couple of high level business problems right like how do you monetize apis um how do you um you know go about api discoveries so these could be typical questions or like case studies that you may be asked in your interview um like hey you know and i i have this um interview or could go like you know my organization has a ton of um apis that we've invested in and and now we want to like you know reap the benefits right we want to monetize them so can you um design a system that will help with monetization of an api so that could be like a two line a lead into your, you know how do you design an application and what are the things you have to consider so <clears throat> depending on the the space and the company and the domain that you're going into um be prepared to maybe go um into enough technical depth i mean you they're not going to ask you to like actually write an api or like a header or you know what are the api calls but knowing that an api needs when you're designing the system um the fact that you need to um you know understand for those like how are apis licensed you know how are apis monetized so i think that's where you know the reading comes in um not we're not going to know enough about all of the the products that you know we're going to interview for but at least have a high level understanding of you know the domain um again this was all some of the things that i used during my interview to like you know how do you um narrow down on your um pain points right like customer pain points so this is a simple four square like you know you can you can find something that um you know is might be annoying and then happens sometimes um and this might not be a great thing to solve for because you know um what is the use case of you know people actually encountering this so again when you're asked to justify something have something that you can go back and say this is why i picked these four problems for these four users so then you could actually ask your interviewer right like these are what i picked based on my um you know based on my analysis is there something that you want me to focus on so sort of engage the interviewer so and that's also a good way to touch base and say see if they are you know with you because sometimes um they could get lost um and and they probably might have checked out so kind of keep pulsing them to see if they are also um you know with you through the interview process um again this this i did not have to use but i have i've had certain um people tell me that they've had to use um like a journey mapping exercise um especially when they're talking about you know um maybe losing customers there could be certain applications you know where you know especially mobile products where they're trying to track what are the daily active users um and and maybe they're like losing certain customer base right so uh, typically these kind of exercises are very helpful to understand you know if, if people are like going through the various um you know like journey of an app are there certain segments where they actually just drop off the radar right and if so why so i think um, those are considerations that um you could maybe bring up in your interview even if you're not asked and and this 
then demonstrates the interviewer like you're thinking like you know beyond just building the application you're like building an application and then comes like how do you actually service it how do people use it um i, I want to pause here um Lisa, in case people have questions thanks lisa thanks um uh, i have one question so i come from a background where i've been a I, I have been a software engineer for quite some time and then right now i am transitioning to become a product manager but again uh, uh i i mean i i am taking the route of uh, you know i want to first be a technical program manager and then after some time i want to be a product manager and i think that gives me a good perspective of how to work with product managers and then i want to take that step um, so but then uh, in in the interviews what i uh, what i get a question is like why why are you trying to be a tpm and your ultimate goal is to be a product manager why don't you just you know try to be a product manager and give it a use called a product manager role but yeah i am a person who wants to be you know work in this technical aspect for some more years and then move there so mm -hmm. such questions what do you think would be the best way to approach i guess i guess first off is um if you if you're in a interview for a tpm role uh -huh. um, if if i were you i would i would only talk about my interest in a tpm okay. because because really go into every interview as if you want to get the job right because really i mean this not not that this sounds like we're going to like share um, 50% of the information and not tell the interview or the full story but but really like it's a short term goal and and if your short term goal, goal is to actually get the job for a tpm and, and and you really truly care about the company you need to frame your narrative um as though that is really your dream job right and and don't you don't really have to um because they're not your mentors right these are things that you might discuss with your mentors but mm -hmm. at an interview um I, if i were you i would i would just talk about my interest in the tpm and then once you actually get the job then like when you're actually then positioning yourself for product manager then is when you would want to talk about you know why you're moving from a tpm to a product mm -hmm. role um, but okay. i would actually take that off the plate during the interview mm -hmm. okay yeah i think i think that makes sense uh, i am trying to do that maybe i I'll, i'll i'll see how i can improve my answers a little more based on the kind of interview that i'm giving so yeah thanks no thanks i mean i think it's it's good to be um candid with the interviewer uh -huh. but then that then raises a question in their mind because tpms and product managers depending on the company can be very very different like for example i've heard they're very functionally different roles in amazon because what product managers do in amazon is write write a lot of like customer like i think customer working backwards is what they call them um mm -hmm. customer the documentation whereas a tpm is actually um really immersed within the development team working very closely with engineering managers and the actual developers um so if you and it's not the case in in microsoft in microsoft the pm is the product manager and the and the tpm so sort of we straddle the entire spectrum so mm -hmm. so for them i think depending on how the company has laid out the tpm and the pm role Mm -hmm. um it could be very different so maybe if you're going to share about truly being interested in product management but you're interviewing for a tpm depending on the company it could maybe send a red red flag to them right like okay is this the right yeah. thing so totally. that, that's the only reason yeah yeah true i i totally uh, agree with that and i think that makes a lot of sense um yeah thanks aditi yeah i guess this journey map again is is something that um you know you probably use a lot in the job maybe depending on how each of your organizations do it uh but think of like you know you have 45 minutes to an hour um your your goal really is to sort of you know make sure the interviewer sees through your thinking process in all of these areas and and because typically a product manager really has to be pretty comfortable in 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 working in all of these sort of domains right so um that that's that's what i would say in terms of finding your framework um you know um go through each of these for different examples and then practice and we talked a little bit about um you know pulsing your interviewers um this this is something that worked for me um you know just a set of generic like user questions um okay so what and like business assumptions right so 
the, and, and these are also good questions for you to actually buy some time because if you're gonna, a lot of people talk fast and they're nervous and I, I gently talk fast as well. So I think for me, the sort of a self check or a pause um, was, was good during an interview because then it also uh, puts the focus back to the interviewer. And then when you ask the question, they start like, you know, clarifying some, some things and then they answer. So after, you know, through your interview process, um, don't hesitate to like, you know, pulse them. Um, you know, you can, you can ask them like, hey, um, this is what we're going and this is, you know, maybe quickly recap what you've done. Um, like for instance, hey, I've, I've, you know, we've talked about the problems, we've talked about the personas and assumptions, and now I want to actually go about and prioritize them. Do you have any questions in these areas? So that way, this is also reminding your interviewer that you've covered these segments, right? Um, so, um, and also gives you some time to like, you know, gather your thoughts and then, you know, take a water break or whatever. So, um, you know, uh, pause, check in, um, clarify, and then move on. And this, this is a slide that we use, um, I think for a product exercise, but I think this applies even for an interview. We talk a lot about like a minimum viable product and how do you build that, right? You don't want to focus just on this and then, you know, work on the reliability and then the usability and then the usefulness portion. Same way in an interview, you don't want to demonstrate just, you know, like, hey, I'm very good, good at this. And then like, just keep talking about like one area. You, you want to cover your breadth and, 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 and you want to do that in the, 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 you know, the one hour or the 45 minutes that you have. Um, so, so the, the speed will come with practice. Um, so make sure that, you know, same way with this, right? It's a very typical, like a very famous Mona Lisa example where they talk about like, you know, I'm going to first build this and then the head and then the rest of the body versus actually, you know, give a framework, give a structure to what you're trying to build and then add more color to it. Um, so same way as we talk about like an MVP for a product, um, during an interview, you really want to uh, make sure that you're, you're really letting your interviewer into your head and then like, you know, focusing on, on, on a lot of depth and then enough depth and pulse them where do they want to go deep and be prepared to go deep in that area. Um, Amazon, especially, I think they like to dig really deep, like based on whatever example that you've picked for your, um, um, you know, start interview questions that they ask you. Um, they can go pretty deep, like they would keep going like why, and then like, you know, if you give an answer, like why did you do that? So whatever examples that you have in your resume or whatever examples that you have um, that you actually provide in your like either phone interview or your actual final loop, um, make sure that you have actually like either written out of two or three pages where, you know, you go through your, you know, accomplishments and, and make sure that you have enough content that you can like dig deep. And if you don't remember, then maybe that's not a good example to, you know, talk about. So remove them. So I guess this is, this is an expanding list. Um, but I didn't want to go into this mode of like, you know, just reading a lot and not having time to internalize it. Um, uh, because sometimes if you, if you read a lot of like advice and same way with like, you know, product preparation advice, right? You got to find what works for you and what really is your style. Um, so I did not actually read a lot of them. I skimmed through a few of these books. And then um, I think I focused the maximum amount of time on actually um, going through the, the, you know, the design exercises. There are a ton of product, um, like product sense questions that, you know, if you, if you just Google product sense, you'll probably get like hundreds of questions. So pick, pick a few of them, um, you know, depending on the industry that you're going to be interviewing for, um, you know, pick, pick them and then, you know, make sure that you are um, prepared to answer them um, and that, you know, pr practice for that. So other than the last two, all of these are books. Um, I think there are a couple of websites for um, PM interview exercises. Um, I have not linked them here, but I think they're fairly easy to find. And then even the, um, like the Facebook Women and Product Group has some of these um, product interview exercise pages. So you can look it up there. Um, there's this company called Exponent, which I actually found pretty useful. Um, so they have a bunch of YouTube like free videos and then they might have a paid version as well. Uh, but there was enough content on the, the free version that I don't think, um, I mean, depending on, you know, what, what your interview preparation looks like and how much you want to, you know, um, give to that. I think one for me personally, I've always enjoyed the product school product book 
And again, it's a free ebook, and it's actually a pretty hefty volume. It's about 250 pages, <laughs> so it's pretty mm. thorough. And what I really enjoyed about it is, again, it covers the entire product lifecycle with a good variety of frameworks in there and useful things, right? Whether that be Simon Sinex, Golden Circle of Y, to um, Business Model Canvas, Link Canvas, Value Proposition, and all the other aspects. So it's a great read. I think just by reading through it gives you a pretty good primer and an overview of what a life, a day in the life of product manager could look like. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I totally miss product school. But yeah, they, they have a lot of also quick blurbs. Yes. I think they, they interview people quite a bit. So, um, you know, look it up. Um, yeah. yeah, so the, the last one really is sort of to, I, I actually interviewed at Amazon Web Services in their, for the product manager tech role. And then a couple of teams at Microsoft, at the Microsoft Teams org um, for the program or the product manager role. I mean, they kind of bundled it together. Um, so they, they call it product manager, but I think officially as a job title, they only have program manager. But I've, I've seen that they, they don't have a title called product. So it's it's all like bundled into one. Uh, but typically the, the stages of the interview are very similar except one um, stark difference that I found was um, the recruiter is involved very heavily initially in Amazon and through the entire process really, like including like till the last stage where you get an offer. Microsoft on the other hand, I think maybe like after the initial resume was uploaded, it really was my hiring managers that kind of took over and I didn't hear from the recruiter like until like the final on-site loop. Um, and even then, it really wasn't the recruiter that I was working with. Um, it just, um, they, they're very transactional. But I think in Amazon, the recruiters play a very, very um, critical role um, for your entire interview experience. And, and um, you know, it's just one aspect that sort of makes the job a little bit easier, right? So, um, yeah, I think so. So, you know, re resume review is definitely the first um, stage where you know you create an account in their um, career system or website. Um, I think in Amazon, finding a good recruiter either through LinkedIn. Um, I was lucky that I I had a good recruiter that I was working with um, when I interviewed at Indeed, um, and and he had reached out because he had moved to Amazon Web Services and he remembered that um, I had my um, you know interview and in Indeed that actually did not work out. But he's like, are you interested in AWS? I'm like, yeah, why not, right? And this was right around the time that I was starting to, you know, think about switching. So he really was like through the whole process. Um, on Microsoft, in Microsoft, I think one of the things I would highly recommend is if you have like, you know, um, friends or like you have internal employees who can either refer you internally. Um, that definitely, I think, expedites the process. I, I I don't think their career. I mean, I know people who have applied online as well. I probably applied to like like seventy five positions. Uh, the good thing is Microsoft doesn't um, um, throttle you into how many positions you can apply for. Um, I think Google, uh, I believe even Facebook, um, they you cannot have more than like I think three or five active. I might be um, misquoting the numbers, but they have a finite number of. Um, uh, applications that you can actually submit in the tool and then you'll have to wait for some time so i think the difference is in microsoft you actually can go the big bang approach and then actually apply to a lot of them as long as you're able to cater your you know resume to that particular position and then really the first screen is the same thing like the recruiter screen i actually did not have that like my recruiter was was missing it was directly the hiring manager the manager that reached out um, as far as the recruiter screening, um, I, I think one of the mistakes that I made in, in another position that I interviewed for was kind of being too casual about it. Uh, but really treat your recruiter screening and every single um, like phone interview, um, like before the full on-site loop, right? Every single interview um, as, as though it is your final interview. I think if you give it the same amount of like um, due diligence, and the same amount of preparation, I think that that really is important. And I kind of like, hey, you know, it's just a phone screen, right? But they, they take a lot of notes. And I think um, if they're interviewing and they have like five or six candidates, so I think um, a good a good phone screen will, will help you get to the next stage. So 
Um, that may be one thing that I did not do in a few of the companies that I applied for. Um, that I then woke up and I'm like, hey, you know, phone screen is very important as well. Um, then was the hiring manager screen. Actually, it was not the hiring manager. This was like, I think one of the fellow product managers um, in, in Amazon. Um, they, um, and it was a full like 45 to one hour loop. And it was, it was as though it was like, you know, one of those product management interviews. So there was a lot of like deep diving into the leadership principles and um, you know, um, going through my examples and um, asking a lot of questions um, in terms of what was my role, what did I do, and you know how it impacted the customers. Um, my first interview at um, Microsoft with a hiring manager really was more of the hiring manager sort of also pulsing my skills, but it is also for them to sell the particular position to them. So I think here it's slightly a different approach that Microsoft takes, which I actually enjoyed because I felt like they were also trying to like, you know, because as much as it is about the interviewer or the company assessing you, it really is also about you assessing if the company is going to work for you, right? So, um, I mean, you should definitely ask them questions, ask them what is their, um, you know, management style, how do they grow employees and, you know, um, you know, all of those things that they judge you on, like the same thing, like what are the things that matter to you when you're working at a company? Um, is it, you know, list them down and have a lot of questions for them and, and make sure that you also evaluate the company based on the responses that you get from them. Okay. So the next stage on in Microsoft um, was really my full on site versus Amazon had another writing exercise. I think if you go in at a level six or and above, um, they have a writing exercise, uh, which can be pretty tedious. I mean, I thought it was going to take me like an hour, uh, but based on the question that they had asked and the character limit that I had, it took me almost like four times as much. So I ended up spending almost five hours on it. Um, so, and I think they, they throw this exercise for all product managers. I don't know if it's for TPM roles. I do not know, but you know, um, it's not a bad idea to be, be prepared for it. Um, and these uh, writing exercise questions are pretty standard. I don't think um, they have really changed them. So you can look it up online if you know if you are in interviewing for Amazon or it's in the pipeline. Um, you can sort of maybe prep for it in advance. I did not know, and I was slightly underprepared, but um, I don't think. Um, this is important, but I don't think this really is a huge deal breaker unless, you know, your writing is, is really bad, which I'm sure it's not for most of you or all of you. Um, but, you know, make sure that you are concise. Um, Amazon is all about frugality and brevity. So, um, you know, use whatever tools to, you know, have powerful words or um, don't use redundant um, writing styles. Um, spell check, you know, all the things that are available <laughs> for you for um, in terms of a good um, writing assignment. The final on-site loop was, um, was brutal. Like, I, I'll be honest, like, like both of these days, at the end of it, I think I ended up with a terrible headache, just with so much talking and, you know, just so much sharing at the, staring at the screen. So um, I think I did a lot before these interviews. Um, and I'll, feel free to ask your interviewers for a break, right? Because um, uh, you need it. So, um, Again, if I had to differentiate like two things, like a couple of things that were different between my Amazon and Microsoft um, interviews, I think it would be um, like this is very much leadership focused, like the leadership principle focus. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but I think there are general, I believe, 12 leadership principles so that you're able to um, maybe internalize those. Um, you know, not just internalize those, but um, have examples that focus on, you know, those leadership principles. I think um, they, they might ask you, like, what is the leadership principle that you most relate to and why? So knowing them enough is important. And they actually like people who are prepped for it. And then, you know, obviously, customer obsession comes through on every single um, interview of theirs. Um, so they actually might divide up each of the interviewers to maybe focus on a certain leadership principle. And then there, there I think is something called a bar, bar riser concept. So um, they, their job is to evaluate if you're better than, I guess, like 50% or 60% of all the people in Amazon. They want somebody who is better than most of the people already in Amazon. 
So in both the cases have lots and lots of examples um, from past jobs. And if you're able to have examples that sort of span different aspects of product management or program management, even though you might not have held that job or have, have that title, um, you know, it's it's okay. Like, you know, um, it's just an example. They, they're not asking, give me an example of a time when you were a product manager and you did this. They're going to typically tell you, give me an example of a time when you, you know, had conflicting priorities or you focus something that helped the customer. So... So, you know, um, if, you're, if you're not currently a product manager, um, you know, remove that um, stigma or you remove that thing away and then just focus on, you know, areas where you've been customer obsessed or, you know, where you, you know, solve for a product decision um, based on whatever functional role you work. Um, contrast that with the Microsoft interview. I think Microsoft interview is definitely very, very engineering and software driven. Um, they're all about like, you know, what's the design and it's, it's a lot about design centered. So a lot of whiteboarding. Um, so I think with COVID, um, I think all of these interviews were um, online. So if you have like a tablet that, that you can like, you know, um, share your tablet screen and then, um, you know, um, whiteboard on it or like, you know, have some design mockups, um, that, that really is a big plus. Um, it's not needed, but I think it just shows that you've taken the extra step and gone the extra mile. Um, so definitely show your design skills. Um, I think it's fun prototyping. It's fun, like, you know, going through um, um, designing a product screen. So, I mean, if it's not fun for you, then maybe, um, you know, do something that um, you can demonstrate your design skills as well, because product management is definitely a lot of, like, um, intersection of engineering and business and design. Um, so um, it's, it's, it's somewhat easier to demonstrate your um, strategic skills or uh, business and customer skills based on, you know, some of the examples that you give. But design skills, um, it's, it's best, you know, shown with maybe some quick mockups. In fact, one of the teams that I interviewed um, with at Microsoft um, had me do a take-home assignment on, um, you know, a couple of prototypes. Um, so you know, that probably is, is a new style of interviewing for certain PM roles. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, yeah, and also Microsoft interviews were definitely focused on how much expertise you can demonstrate on the enterprise product. So just the whole, you know, software enterprise product mindset um, and, and showcasing how much you know about their team and their culture is, is helpful as well. And I believe that's all I had for today. Um, yeah, if you have any and, and if you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out. Um, I know a couple of you already added me on LinkedIn, or if you want to just, you know, email me, that's fine as well. Um, there, there really is. If I had to summarize, I, I don't think there is one style that will work for for everyone. So just just focus on creating your own style. Um, you know, your own. Because definitely your examples are your own. So, um, you know, you may as well, um, you know, focus on creating a um, framework that is um, your own as well. All right, Lisa, that's that's all I had. Yeah, Viti, can I ask you a question? Please, Swati, sure. Uh, thank you very much for this detail about comparison with Microsoft and Amazon. That helps me a lot. Uh, so, uh, about the Microsoft interviews, you mentioned that it's a highly design center. So, when you say design center, it's just about the UX design center or the system design kind of things? System design and UX design, I mean, they, they have a functional role for UX and, and even like research. So, I don't think they want to see very beautiful designs. But I think because I think one of the examples um, I'll give you was they had me um, like talk through how would I um, design an ATM for school kids. Um, so, you know, going through that, like there definitely is like screen flows. Um, it doesn't have to be very high fidelity, like, you know, low fidelity stuff. And that's what I would definitely recommend reading this book, Design of Everyday Things. It's, um, it's, it's, it's a good like beginner book about like how do you design, um, like, you know, affordances and, um, it's got like some fundamental, um, um, you know, terminology that people typically in the design world use. So if you're not very familiar with design, I would say that there are a lot of resources. Um, and again, um, I would say breadth versus depth. So, you know, just 
the more um like you know the the journey that you can demonstrate in the design i think that's that's sufficient you don't have to go into like um you know the screen look and feel and then the logo and all of that because honestly you're okay. not that okay thank you very much and the other follow up on that other thing you mentioned is that it's a engineering driven i think you gave it a little bit of touch on that can can you talk a little more about that um yeah so i think again this is very specific to the two roles that i interview like in amazon it is a product manager tech role in aws mm-hmm. and then in microsoft it was microsoft teams so i think from a product perspective um the aws um team is is probably a definitely a customer centric and again it was not a aws where you're actually designing the aws product in my case so with the example that and the experience that i had i felt that amazon was more like business and leadership principle focused um and definitely the customer focused um versus um microsoft wanted to hear like more about like some of the design positions or like trade offs how i went about like actually designing some of the you know or working with the architects or the designers or the, the you know the engineering managers so that's where i i i get the pulse at um at microsoft it's it's definitely more of an engineering um driven culture okay that makes sense thank you very much i do have other questions but i'll let others go if they have them okay hey, hey aditi this is raveena i have a question for you so what was the total timeline from you know initial point of contact with the recruiter all the way to offer letter for you in you know in both amazon and microsoft amazon definitely was like the most um like proactive like i think one of the the things that that's amazing really about amazon is is how quickly they um they react so microsoft was the one that actually first gave me the offer and then i i had finished i was in this stage of the interview on a friday and then i had my full on site on a monday so when they they can actually expedite your interview um like within like two or three days if they really want to interview you so i think in my case mine probably is not a good baseline example but i would say typically um it could be anywhere like two to three weeks or it could be anywhere from like two to one week okay that makes sense thank you hey aditi Hey, yes. Um, okay. So your transition from Boeing to um, Microsoft or Amazon, did that happen uh, naturally? I mean, organically, or uh, was there a strategy? Did you have like a tunnel vision? These are these are the companies that I want to be in, and did you have like a strategy um, before you even landed um, the interview? that's a very fantastic question i i think i think more than strategy i would say there was definitely a like an urge and a push because um you know going back to my timeline i i i i spent about 9 years in boeing and there was there was some time in in this time frame like 2018 where i was i was you know i'd done this huge project for the fleet transportation department and i'm like okay what next right um and and that's where i actually transitioned into um product management uh, within going around this time frame um but i would say that for me more than like a huge strategy it was also some of the projects that i was driving at going then felt like they were like i was adding a lot of value and then i just felt like i had reached a point in like you know 2020 where um i've kind of seen quite a bit in going you know switch teams quite a bit so for me it was also a growing sense of like restlessness like hey you know what i'm sure there's like more to it right uh, once you feel that i think that that urge or that definitely the 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 push from within is is sort of the the strategy that i kind of propelled on um there really wasn't a, too much of a plan so in some cases it was organic but in 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 a lot of cases it was also strategic in that um i had i had consciously taken like product roles and i wanted to stay within the core of software so even at boeing although it's a very manufacturing centered organization um and and we do build quite a bit of like software products but you know they're all like b2b products um so i was trying to like say okay how do i you know expand my customer um skills even though i you know my rn customers in boeing are like you know pilots or like you know other airline companies right so some of my products didn't touch them but i know that some of them could so I think in terms of strategy it was also about maybe picking teams maybe in the last two years to sort of like push towards like a more technical like TPM sort of a role 
and then um, definitely I think my international assignment um, last year you know I, I, I went back to India and I spent three months um, trying to go there with the team in Bangalore so I think there are certain like touch points or like you know highlights that I could say that maybe propel in terms of strategy uh, but depending on where you are um, in your career um, I think it's the it's sort of the internal drive because um, you know my friends at Microsoft were like you know calling me for like like five years, right? Like I think no matter like how much the push comes from outside, I think the biggest push is the one that that will come from within um, each of us. So I think for me that that didn't happen until 2020 for whatever reason. So uh, I guess uh, to answer your question in a very roundabout way, it's sort of both. Okay. Uh, if you have a couple of minutes, I can. I have one more question. If not, I can leave my ears. No, no, you can okay. ask. I think we have. Okay. So you said in Amazon, like just when you were doing your last uh, slide, you said it is very important that you have a good recruiter when you were going to Amazon interview, right? So um, it's how did I mean? Did you choose the recruiter, or it just happened to you from uh, giving multiple interviews? Did you have like one particular recruiter who's across the board? How, how did that? No, actually, the recruiter reached out. I I hadn't reached out to any recruiter, but I know that um, their recruiters are very proactive about. Um, you know, being on LinkedIn, um, and they actually also um, are very good about answering the LinkedIn like um, messages. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's a good thing with the Amazon, um, you know, interview process. Is I think it's it's quite an open book. Mm -hmm. um, unlike Microsoft, I think in Microsoft it's sort of like it's kind of a closed box, and and really your biggest way in is if you have a referral. Um, or, you know, your resume gets picked from the, you know, from the uh, Microsoft oh. career site. So in, in Amazon, yeah, I, the recruiter had reached out. So I had just, you know, already had a connection, but I hadn't um, done anything else. But even even if you do have a recruiter, their first step would be like, have you all actually submitted your resume in the, for that particular job ID? Okay. okay. Yeah, that helps. Uh, but I might have more questions for you. I'll shoot at any time. Okay. okay. Yeah, sure. I have a question about uh, mentors and sponsors. You you mentioned that mentors helped you a lot during the uh, your career growth. So uh, I do have mentors, but I get confused what questions I should pick them. So if you have a candid examples uh, where actually they helped you, I would really like to know that. Um. Yeah, I'm trying to think like mentors versus sponsors. Is it? Yes, I mean, where, where does exactly mentors help you in your career? Yeah, I think for me, um, I don't have a very good example, actually. I think a lot of my mentors were just, you know, some of my friends who were um, either in some of these other companies or who were, um, you know, like a little more advanced in their career than me, who've sort of been there, done that. Uh, but, but really, I... Um, a good like you know maybe um, an example would be and, and this is not something that I am quoting from my personal experience but what I've heard is you know find a mentor in in your partner teams right somebody who is maybe not reporting up to your own management chain and, and who's sort of like maybe one or two levels above you um, who could be able to give you um, you know a more um, balanced sort of a perspective um, so the thing that I value a lot from mentors is, you know, maybe, you know, you know, the perspective in terms of like, hey, you know, you're having a tough issue at work or you're trying to understand how something will, you know, how to deal with certain scenarios. Um, a lot of times you could use them as a sounding board. I mean, the other thing with mentors is also like, you know, they're kind of looking out for you um, again, definitely driven and initiated by you. Um, so if, if you have certain questions or if you have certain things that you need help with like I think you should um, you know maybe go with a list to your mentors so that way you know um, they know where you need help with uh, but I don't have an example where it helped my career specifically because it's like all like over a period of time like there's no like one like um, area where it was like okay I had this and then I went to the mentor and then like it just was you know um, totally different after that um, Sorry, I don't know if I kind of answered it. It's a, it's a yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, that helps me. I am mindful of your time, given that it is weekend, and I know, you know, we definitely spending time with family. So, so yeah, I think this is great. Thank you for today. Again, thank you for taking the time and Q&A.
Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. Thank you everyone for coming on a Saturday and I hope you have a great rest of the weekend. Thanks everybody. Bye. Good luck. Yeah. Take care. Thank you everyone. Bye.